All right, stop. Slam your butt and listen. Ice waves back with a brand new engine. Something slams your butt in the wall, throws you around like a rat doll. Will he ever stop? Yo, I don't know. Slam him to the wall and we'll go. To the extreme, he rocks a box like a vandal. Revs up the cage and flips your butt like a sandal. Dance. Ding, 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 da, da, ding, ding. Ice wave. Baby! Yeah, so we just built this crate uh, a couple days ago because we're shipping out in two days. So we wanted to make sure we fit everything in the shop in here that anything that we need to bring we'll have it in the crate with us. So yeah. like those two? Yeah, like those two robots. Maybe not some of the larger machines and stuff, but you know, we want to bring at least like a small arbor press so we can build engines and replace bearings and things at the event. Uh, we've got some uh, are you bringing the mill? <laughs> we just well, <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty excited because they have. They said they're going to have some of those there this year. But uh, we have all of our all of our files on a USB stick, and these are all of our. Uh, every single sheet here is part of a setup. Oh my! For CNC machining, so you can see like uh, these are all the tools that are required for building these different things. So they find like that's a frame piece. That's like the side frame. And then it tells you exactly what tools you need to load in a CNC mill. So if anybody's got a hot CNC and they want to make ice cream parts. Just take the USB stick, oh. and we can make a part in like 10 minutes. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's organization. That, Diana, Which comes in handy. Goals. I, I want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll get it's, on that. It's a, it's a nice to have. Cool. But yeah, that, this is actually like one of those, one of those frame pieces that we, that we make on the CNC. It's a pretty simple one, but we, we pocket out a lot of areas for the weight. This is the back of the frame, so we don't expect too many people to be hitting the back. Mm -hmm. So, Mark, how long does it take you to make an engine for Ice Wave? So, uh, we actually tear apart the concrete saw that this comes out of. We steal a few parts from it. It's a concrete saw from Husqvarna. They're actually one of our sponsors this year, which is really cool. Crankshaft and a few of the other little components, the carburetor and things like that, out of it. It takes us about uh, one evening to, to take apart the saw and build one of our custom engines, uh, including all of the extra bits. Uh, we add an electric start. We had some microcontroller for the uh, timing of all the electronics and the starting. Uh, we have electronic ignition. We have uh, servo controlling the throttle, so we can control the throttle with our remote control. So uh, this is this is our new custom engine. Basically, uh, the the only thing really original from the engine is the head here, and uh, the carburetor is stock. But we had a throttle servo for remote control of the throttle. We had our own starter motor, and that's built into the uh, custom crank uh, crankcase that we built here, which is billet CNC machined. So that's that's the new custom part of the engine uh, for this. All these year. pieces come together. We call this the engine bay assembly because it's got all these things. You can see here the front half of it this is actually the front uh, area right here. This whole thing is completely empty. There's nothing here, and push all the components as far back as possible so that people can't chop through like Rotator did that first time we got owned. <laughs> this is uh, the electronics, we call it the E-Box, which is, uh, it has a microcontroller, it has a battery, it has a really tiny little battery that's capable of putting out like 100 amps so it can start the motor. This entire assembly can run on its own on the bench with no other connection to the robot. So a lot of times you'll see like, half of our robot is still working and the other half isn't. <laughs> That's because they're completely independent systems. So you can have the engine still running even though our drivetrain dies, or you can have the drivetrain still running even when there's no head on the robot at all. So uh, we like to keep things independent for that reason. This is how people ship their battle bots. So we built the blade holder over here. Holds up to five blades. We actually still have five blades from a couple of them are brand new and a couple of them are from previous seasons. So this one was the most recent one that we used, which still has the sprocket attached to it. What's cool about each blade is you can flip them over and get two uses out of it. So because we only spin in one direction, we spin clockwise. We're, uh, we're done with basically one or two complete robots, mostly. Uh, this is actually a third wedge that we're welding up here, which uh, you can see when you clamp this. You've got to clamp it to the table because it likes to warp on us as we're welding it. There's so much heat that gets poured into it. But we actually have to finish this up. I had to make an emergency run to the welding supply place. There's Angie. To get uh, well, welding gas today. But that's, that's one of the wedges. So I gotta finish doing some welding and then I've gotta do some CNCing on it, flip it over. We actually uh, mount it in the CNC. I can show you that in a second. This is the first year that we've actually had a uh, 
fixture in the CNC mill to machine the wedge. Because normally we, we use a tilting head manual mill. We don't have one of those, so we always have to borrow one from a friend and like drive all the way to somebody's shop and use it. And this year, a friend got rid of their mill, so we don't have it anymore, so we have to figure out how to do it. Basically, just take a little, um, take a couple of laser cut pieces of steel, weld them together at the right angle. And then this is, this is a different one, but uh, you can see there's three in there. And so we just take the wedge, flip it upside down so that the pointy edge is face up, and then bolt it right down to that, and then we just run a program. Unfortunately, our mill isn't long enough to do the entire wedge. The wedge ends up being like 36 inches wide. We only have 36 and 30 inches of travel, I think. So uh, we have to do it in two setups. We do left half, right half, and just slide it over when we're done the first half. This is wedge yeah. number two. We still have to weld the little holes in that and then touch that up and then uh, finish grinding. We gotta do flat disc on that one. And then uh, wedge number one is basically complete. That's how that looks like. This is wedge number one here. Very sharp. Don't wanna pick it up without gloves. Sounds ready to go. This is, uh, we have engine cover number one over there that you saw before, engine cover two and engine cover three. This is what it looks like before it gets uh, cleaned up and painted and stuff. It's pretty ugly, but yeah. that's because I'm not good at welding. Actually, I don't, I don't do TIG welding, so I have a, a spool gun for the, for the aluminum, which works really well, and, uh, you know, only Scorpios has gotten found, and, and rotator. But uh, no, it holds up pretty well. The main thing is just, it's really thin material, you know. We don't, don't want to have our center of gravity too tall, so we don't want to make it out of, like, one-inch thick aluminum. We want to just have some basically dust cover on the top. Mm -hmm. And then this is a new configuration for this year. Uh, we're doing wedgelets, just like everyone else, you know, <laughs> but uh, I gotta stay up with the time. I feel so. like someone inspired you and you might even be on your shirt. Yeah, it might, might be a little bit uh, <laughs> coming from, from the best. But yeah, what we realized is like, I think the last few years, the wedge has always been a sort of afterthought because it's not really our thing, you know? But you do have to actually care a lot about the wedge. And when you don't, you end up having things like, I was watching in, in our fight, I went back and watched that video from last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can show you the damage, but basically there's a, a section of our wedge that's completely caved in. And about halfway through our match, or you know, what felt like halfway through, which is really only like 30 seconds, yeah. Our wedge is now an inch off the ground, and we're riding around, and we can't get under you guys. So it's like, okay, what happened? Scroll back, and you look at the video, and it's actually we were spinning one of the one of the few times we were actually at, you know at a pretty decent speed of the, with the blade. We hit you guys, and we threw ourselves into like the corner of the wall, and that dented our wedge enough to raise it up off the ground like an inch. So the wedge this year has all these extra welded in reinforcements to prevent that from happening. So it got dented over here. I'll show you. The, the actual, yeah. So that was that was the wedge from our fight, and that was this giant dent doesn't look like much, but it keeps the wedge off the ground in the front, and so uh, this was all caused by us just hitting you guys and then throwing ourselves into the wall, and the wall hit right there and dented that. And that's because our reinforcement was way up here. You can actually see where the reinforcement is, so we moved the reinforcement down to the very very bottom to prevent that from happening. So I come with the, oh yeah, that's like a, a sales table, right? Like yeah. Be working with, or no, I, I shit myself in the crate. Right? <laughs> it's almost, almost fits. It's just kind of crowded. I mean, a little bit, little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. And if you're, if you put a seat back there, then you have a nice little spot for you to sit, then you fit. I just sell robot parts from behind. <laughs> behind the Want some parts? Yeah.